afraid this is the part of the evening where you have to stop enjoying yourselves and listen to a political speech. Uh, and I, I, the only reason I'm here is when Chris invited me, I knew that this dinner would be quiet, sober, and understated, uh, which is why I was accepted. Uh, I, caught, I, I didn't think it would be an evening of glamour, <laughs> dazzling beauty, outrageous outfits, but that's just enough about Chris. <laughs> uh, but what about Miss Hope Strings? That's the best yeah. entertainment I've been to at any Labour fundraiser before. What a show she gave us. Now, and Kay, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for being one of the greatest broadcasters in Britain. More importantly, thank you for your Twitter feed, which keeps me entertained every day. And if I could put down trolls like you do, I'd be in a much better shape now. Uh, so thank you very much. Now, Chris said to me, uh, he gave me a very tight brief, he said keep it short, avoid a big political speech, so like Hope Springs, I'm afraid I won't be able to unpack my case of dreams uh, tonight, which is a shame, uh, because there are things I did want to say to you. I wanted to say what I think about this shambolic, third-rate, out-of-touch government, led by a Prime Minister who couldn't negotiate her way out of a tight parking spot. I wanted to talk about Nigel Farage, the pound shop Mussolini, who's got a new party, but the same old lives. And I wanted to call for a people's vote on Brexit to put this whole story of the But I'm afraid I'm not allowed to. Now, we're all here to support some great causes tonight. First, the UK acquired Brain Injury Forum. The charity does so much important work for the people who acquire brain injuries through accidents or strokes. Chris, you're a great chair of the all-party group. You're so effective, you have persuaded me only six months ago to strip down to my pants, put my head in an MRI scanner, and have my brain scanned at Birmingham University, and we were both surprised uh, that we actually found one. It's an obvious scanner. One between the two. And also tonight we're, we're supporting Melanoma UK, who campaigned to raise awareness of this form of skin cancer and to advise people how to enjoy the sun sensibly and offer great support for people with melanoma once diagnosed uh, and receiving treatment. And as most of you will know, my good friend was diagnosed with a melanoma after his husband noticed the mole had been revealed uh, after a haircut. And it just proves how important vigilance is uh, for ourselves and our loved ones. But there's also a third great cause we're supporting this evening. Is there anyone here from the Rhonda Valley? Yay! I do. There you do this. There you do this. Uh, now, Rhonda Constituency Labour Party has had the good sense to select my friend every election since 2001. And when we think about the history of the Labour Party, we think of its rich traditions, the Welsh mining communities give us. We think of the struggles for decent pay and safe working conditions. We remember the miners of Tony Pandy who faced down the troops sent by Churchill to quell their strike. And we remember when an Iron Bevan came to build the National Health Service. He modelled it on the miners' welfare associations as he had known in the valleys. So Rhonda CLP. We have much to thank you for, and especially we have to thank you for Chris Bryan. Now, I first met Chris uh, in a small nightclub in Pagal. Oh no, uh, sorry, that's the, that's the previous one. Uh, uh, but what can I possibly say uh, about Chris that hasn't already been said? Well, I think in the age of nondescript politicians, Chris stands out as a genuine polymath. He is a fantastic writer. 
his biography of Stafford Cripps and his history of Christian socialism are standard works. I quoted from one of them last night at a Fabian Society lecture. His histories of Parliament and parliamentarians will be read for centuries to come, or in our household, will sit on the bookshelf. <laughs> <laughs> but it is very much like He served with distinction as a government minister at the Foreign Office and as the Deputy Leader of the House and on the front bench in opposition. He holds the government to account with real expertise and toughness, and no government minister ever wants to be on the wrong end of a Chris Bryan parliamentary question. And he's a passionate campaigner for the things he cares about. Internationalism and the UK's place in the world, for human rights, for the people of his beloved constituency. And it's not a surprise that he holds the Stonewall Politician of the Year Award. Chris, you are a true champion of the people, and we're proud to call you our friend. Yeah. Even though, for the entire time, as a Foreign Office Minister, you had a picture on your wall that said, never forget that Tom Watson is the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little gap between the two of us. No, I, I can only add that the Church of England's loss is the Labour Party's gain. Um, now, there is a job that Chris briefly held, and which I currently hold. That's not a vicar, by the way. Um, it's the Shadow Secretary of State for Digital Culture, Media and Sports. And I want to say a word or two about the arts, as though I suspect one or two people here tonight associated with the arts. Is that okay? Yeah. Good, I thought it would be. One of the great tragedies about the past three years is that Brexit has sucked the oxygen out of all public discourse. It's sapped the energy from our political system. And at every moment, we should be talking about the glittering prizes offered by the fourth industrial revolution and the great changes we will see to the economy with a changed way of life. Uh, and it's made my brief much harder to advance. I want culture, in all its forms, to be at the heart of our society when we go through that tr uh, transition to the fourth industrial revolution. Emotional intelligence is going to be at the heart of the productive capacity of Britain, and the arts are the way we do that. At the last election, we pledged a billion pounds for the arts, including for schools, to encourage the next generation of artists, designers, actors, writers, and filmmakers. And I'll be arguing for the next Labour Manifesto to include pledges to keep our museums free, to support our fantastic video games industry, to support local arts venues and theatres, to keep live music venues open, and to support freelancers in the arts world where I know the conditions could be tough. And work is as insecure as any other one. And I mentioned the miners earlier. Those industrial communities were hubs of culture and creativity. From the miners who knew their Shakespeare and Milton off by heart, and the iron forgers who could compose ballads and poetry, and the shipbuilders who sang in magnificent choirs, and the chorus of the brass bands linked to every colliery and coal field from Scotland down to Kent. The British people are and always have been culture vultures. We love our libraries and book clubs. We flock to our galleries and museums. Free, thanks to Labour. We love our live music, from the proms to Glastonbury. We produce world-class theatre, film and television with a generation of writers like James Graham, Jed Mercurio, and Phoebe Waller-Bridge. But cuts are killing all that. Closing libraries, threatening repertory theatres, scrapping drama and music in schools as ever before, and the Tories know the price of everything and the value of nothing. So the next Labour government will place the arts centre stage 
and make Britain a global centre for the creative industries, cultural arts. And I hope you'll help me do that. If you work in the art sector, please keep in touch with me. We need your ideas about what should go in that next general election manifesto that we hope will be very soon. Now, I must tell you, because he's made me do it, that there's an auction to come up with some amazing and unique prizes. So please dig deep for three brilliant causes tonight. There are prizes donated by Hugh Grant. Remember him? <laughs> A private tour by the Duke of Wellington. I don't know how he got that. And even a cake baked by Celebrity Bake Off winner, Jess Phillips. So please, please get ready. Now finally, we all know that the next few months are going to be tough for our country. Our politics is brittle and bad-tempered. We've some really huge choices to make. And when I think about the public figures, of the stature of Chris, I'm reassured. But when I meet people like you all here tonight, prepared to come out on a Tuesday night, put your money where your mouth is, show your solidarity and support, I'm even more encouraged that we're gonna get through this stormy weather. And never forget, if we've learned one thing tonight, it's that hope Springs. Thank you very much. Thank you.